number eight of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania in the United States where I live, where I work, where I knit, and where I get into as much crafty goodness as I possibly can. Today is Saturday, November the 3rd, 2018. I can't believe we're already in November. The, the time is going by so fast. It's just, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I'd like to say a huge welcome to any new viewers and a huge welcome back to all of my returning viewers. I thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to come and visit with me today. This podcast is mostly, mostly a knitting podcast, primarily a knitting podcast, although I will have a little bit here and there with a few other things that, that get my attention and kind of send me down a little, <gasps> squirrel, look! Um, I do tend to go rattling down a few little, little squirrel trails here and there. Uh, with all sorts of other crafts, but primarily this this podcast focuses mostly on knitting. So pull up a chair, grab your knitting or whatever other crafting project you're working on, grab yourself a beverage, sit back and enjoy. Let's let's get ready to chat for eh, maybe half an hour or so uh, about what what knitting and other other things I've been up to in the past week. So just as a starting point, what am I drinking? I always seem to have a, a beverage. I always seem to have a beverage. That's what it is, a beverage. Um, I always seem to have a beverage with me, um, a little bit to keep my whistle wet as I'm sitting here yapping away. And um, today I'm drinking some tea from Stash. No, no, no. It is, it's stash tea, and it is Christmas in Paris. It's an herbal tea. It has, let's see if I can get the ingredients into focus for you. Just a little heads up, I'm using a new camera setup, I'm using our are good camera but it doesn't have a flip screen so I'm not able to actually see what it is I'm doing right now so I'm just here just using a couple of prayer that everything that I'm saying and doing is actually in frame in focus and <laughs> that, that this is actually working I'm going to have to work on looking at how I can set it up so that I have another screen here so I can see what I'm doing at the same time as I'm taping because I think this might be the best camera to use for for doing my podcasting it has um, it has the best focus the best um, what's the word I'm looking for it produces the best image of either using a camcorder which is definitely not a high def camcorder um, my phone is not bad but it's not the greatest and this this camera that I'm using a Canon I, EO5 Rebel, is that what it is? Anyway, it was a camera I bought for my husband for our 25th wedding anniversary. And um, it's it's a nice, nice high-end camera. Or at the time, it was a nice high-end camera. So anyway, oh, there we go down another rabbit trail. Sorry, people. Tea. Tea. That's what we were talking about, right? Good grief. Uh, so anyways, the ingredients in this tea, it's, it's a caffeine-free herbal tea called Christmas in Paris. A little bit of the information on the packaging. I'm just kind of hoping that's focusing. I, I don't quite know the ingredients. So it is caffeine-free herbal tea. It is made with cocoa shells, peppermint, lavender, chocolate flavor and vanilla extract and it is really really delicious it has a very very faint um, chocolatey mint flavor to it which is which is really nice it's a light delicate flavor and I, I quite really quite enjoy it yeah 
this, this is nice. This is a real, really nice tea. So, I do not have any finished objects to show you this week. We had um, a finished object last week. I finished off my socket slouch hat. Uh, this week I focused primarily on my texture time show, and I also have a new cast on. And I'll talk about I'll talk about the texture time show for a little bit first, and then I'll I'll show you what I've cast on in the past week. So my texture time shawl that is the it is by Stephen West. It is a mystery shawl pattern that came out earlier this fall. Each week through the month of October, we were given a new clue in the shawl. So the first week in October, we received the first clue, then the second, third, fourth, and actually a fifth bonus clue came out on the last weekend in October. So I'm about almost almost halfway finished the second clue so I'm I'm a long way from finishing this um, I'm hoping to have it ready once it starts to get a little bit colder out so that I can use it by then but in the meantime I'm not that I'm not fussed at all that I have not finished the shawl there's a quite a few people in the, the Ravelry group that have completed their shawl already and they've got it all done um, I'm just enjoying the knit um, I'm having fun with it. I'm enjoying the yarns. I'm enjoying. I'm just enjoying the pattern. So it is one that I do have to focus a fair bit on. So it's not one that I can haul around with me and work on a lot all over the place. But it, it's one that I I enjoy just sitting back, relaxing with it, and working on it in the evenings, also in the mornings while I'm drinking my tea before I head off to work. So anyway, I am using uh, my own my own hand dyed yarn for most of the shawl. The shawl calls for one main color, three contrast colors, plus a fourth contrast color that is also one that is a different texture type of yarn than the first the first four yarns are. So I dyed the first four yarns, the main color plus the three, the first three of the contrast colors. I dyed those myself using Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Bear yarn. So I dyed those myself and these are, I've showed you these in previous, previous episodes, but these are the four colors that I'm using. The charcoal kind of color is the, the main color and then I'm using the pink, the purple, and the, the turquoise color as, as the first four of the contrast colors. Or the first three. Karen can't count today, apparently. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have switched to caffeine-free herbal tea this early in the day. Anyway, so <laughs> this is the main color plus three of the contrast colors. And it also uses, let me just put those down, down there. It also uses a fourth contrast color, which is to have a different texture than the other, the other yarns that are being used. So for this one, I am using this pretty, pretty yarn. This is, uh, the yarn is Knit Picks Aloft in the colorway Celestial. It is 75% Super Kid Mohair and 25% Silk. It's a lace weight yarn and when I first started working with it I found that it was too thin compared to the other yarns and it was just kind of getting lost in the pattern even though it was to have the texture. So what I decided to do with it is I'm holding the yarn double with, with some bare yarn. So I'm just using a fingering weight bare yarn and I'm holding it double with I'm holding it double with the the mohair and that's bringing it up to the right thickness so that it 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 matches and it coordinates nicely with the other yarns. So those are the yarns I'm using for for my texture time shawl. Now if you are oh and the other thing oops one more thing I want to mention before I, I show you where I'm at with with the shawl. I'm using 3.75 millimeter needles or US 5 and they're Knitter Pride, Knitter's Pride interchangeable needles. And I, I, 
I quite like these needles. Uh, I bought them fairly recently and they're just, I, I find they're very pleasant to work with. So anyways, if you are someone who is still, still working on this shawl and still wants to keep it a mystery and a surprise, I will post someplace down, somewhere along the bottom of the screen here, I will post and let you know when it's safe to, to look back so that you don't ruin the surprise. I suspect that no one, no one out there is, that's planning on working it is much farther behind than I am or people that are going to join in at a later date are likely those that don't want the surprise. They want to wait and see what the shawl looks like before they commit to casting on. So anyways, I will post a little a little note down here about uh, I'll put a timestamp down here for when it's safe to look back if you want to if you want to keep this a, a surprise. So where's the top? So his here is where I'm at now. So the center portion here is the first clue and then the second clue adds these little squiggle sections with some Latvian braid detail along, along with it. What happens with the shawl, this, this portion on this side is going to be repeated on on this side so the shawl when it's complete will fall down your back this will go down the center of your back and then the shawl is going to head off in either direction from from the first from the first clue so here is where I am so far with Maybe if I show it this way, it might show up a little bit more clearly. So here's where I'm at so far with the second clue. And the second clue is going to have five of the, these are the texture portions here, the blue. Um, it's going to have five of those, plus it will have six of the uh, Latvian braid detailed section as well. So I'm almost done the second, almost done the first half of the second clue where I have four of these done. I have to do one more. I'm ready to do the next braid. Then I'll do one more section of the, the, the squiggle section and then one more braid. And then I'm ready to either move on and start on the third clue on half of the shawl or I will go and I will do the second half of the second clue on the other half of the shawl. So if you've been looking away, you are, you're safe to look back now. I'll put, again, I'll put a little timestamp when I started this portion so you know when it's safe to, to come and look back. So that is one of my works in progress that I spent a fair bit of time uh, working on that this past week. The other work in progress I have that Let's back this up just a second. I also have my row cardigan. I haven't had a chance and haven't spent any time with that in the last several weeks. I did, however, a couple days ago, I sat down and I got two more hanks of yarn out and I wound those up into two cakes because I was at the point on doing the two sleeves where I was almost out of the, the yarn for those, so I hadn't got around to doing up the cake. So I just kind of put it aside and I'll, I'll come back to it shortly. So I probably only have a few more inches of the, the sleeve cap to do on the two sleeves. So yesterday or the day before, I sat down and caked up two more hanks of yarn so that I'm, I'm ready to get going on that. So I really should probably try to get those two sleeves finished up soon because I really would like to wear that cardigan some, sometime this winter once it starts getting colder out. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that, that I will, hopefully I'll be able to show you a couple completed sleeves on that project in the next week or two, I'm hoping. So my, 
work in progress, the, the second work in progress that I spent a fair bit of time working on, sometime this past week working on, is, uh, is a brand new cast on. And they are my Christmas socks or my festive socks, or a pair of Christmas or festive socks. I'm using yarn that I dyed myself. Um, remember before I kept pointing to two of the yarns that were up here? I, I took one of them and I caked it up. So it's, again, it's using Knit Picks, Stroll, Fingering, Bare, and I've dyed it in this nice colorway. And basically what I did was I just have a long stretch of white and then I just did a few flashes of red and green. So I have a little flash of red, then green, then red, then green, then red again. Um, the second skein uses the same colors, but it's it's more random. This one is was a lot more specific. The color was specifically placed. So I caked that up recently, and October twenty eighth, I think I cast this on. Um, so I got started on a pair of just plain vanilla socks, Christmas socks. So here's what they're. Here's what they look like. So the yarn, the yarn plays up in a really fun way on here. It kind of spirals around the sock, which I think is, I think is kind of fun. I know there's some people that really don't like the flashing and pooling of the variegated yarns. I do like it. I think it's kind of fun. So this is, this is where I'm at now with with these socks. I'm doing them two at a time um, on Magic Loop. I'm using 2.25 millimeter or US size one uh, needles. They are my Addy Sock Rockets. I have no idea what the length of the cable is. Um, I, I'd have to go rooting through uh, reading through my stuff to find out which, uh, what the length of the, the cable is. But anyways, so I'm just, I don't have a specific pattern for this. It's just kind of a, a basic vanilla sock recipe. I cast on 64 stitches for each and I did a two by two, just a regular two by two ribbing in, um, I just did the two by two ribbing and I did that for 20, 20 rows. I did the two ribbing separately and then once I had that done, I, I joined the two of them together on, on, one, on one needle um, or one set of needles and cable. And then what I plan on doing is I'll continue knitting for a length of time until they're probably between, well, probably roughly seven inches long. Um, give or take a bit. I really don't like my socks to be extra long. I have heavy calves and I find that it's a, my socks are just a lot more comfortable if they only go up to roughly the bottom of my calves. So I don't tend to knit my socks especially long. So what I'll do is I'll go till they're about seven inches, about seven inches long then I'll get ready to do the heel. My preferred heel is a slip stitch heel flap with then the heel turn and the gussets. And then I'll keep doing my stockingette all the way down the foot until I get to the toe. And I usually do a wedge toe where I decrease every second row for a certain number of rows. And then I'll decrease every row for a certain number of rows until I'm down to probably eight to ten stitches on each needle. So I have, I have big square feet. Um, I don't have, my, t my toes aren't very, aren't very pointy, they're, they're quite square. So I, I prefer a wedge toe, it fits, it fits my foot far more comfortably. So that's about it for my, my works in progress. So I basically worked most of the time this week I've worked on either my texture time shawl or my my Christmas socks and oh that's what else I that's what else I forgot to mention 
These are socks that I'm planning on making for Christmas. They are part of the festive sock knit along that Amy Florence from the Stranded Podcast has running on her Ravelry group and that she's mentioned in her podcast as well. So she has, um, she has a cow going along where she is, or a challenge that she's made for herself a couple years ago where she challenged herself to make 24 pair of festive socks so that she would have a different pair of socks to wear each day in December leading up to Christmas. And I thought that sounded really fun. Um, so I'm going to join along in, or I have joined along in that, that knit along. This is my first pair of socks that I'm knitting currently. What I think I plan on doing is I will probably go rooting through my collection of socks and see what I have that are socks that I would think are, are festive. The, and for me, festive is in greens, whites, and reds. So I do have quite a few socks that I've knit in the last maybe year or so that have been worn very rarely. Um, some of them have not been worn at all. Um, I seem to have got on a kick for a while with making oodles of socks but not wearing them which seems seems kind of strange. I'm clearly in those cases was a process knitter. I just I enjoyed the process of knitting them and then I didn't really do anything with with the product once I was done. So what I think I will do is I am going to go through all of my socks and see if I can kind of build up a bit of a festive sock a festive sock basket that I have ready for wearing once the, the Advent season starts and once the, the holiday Christmas season starts up in the beginning of December. So I think I will have a bit of a head start in getting 24 pair of socks ready to, to wear through, through the first part of December leading up until Christmas. So um, we shall see how many I get done. But I think that over time I do want to build up a festive sock basket so that I have that for, for subsequent years so that I can wear a different pair of festive socks each day of December or each day in December leading up until Christmas. So that sums up my my knitting um, my knitting progress that I've made throughout the past week. What I want to talk about for a few minutes now are some of the acquisitions that I've made in the past week. I ordered a little while back, I was watching the um, Nordic Stitches, either her podcast or her, her vlog. I don't remember which of the two it was. But anyways, it was the Nordic Stitches, and she was having a sale in her Etsy shop with her stitch markers. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go take a peek at them. Well, I fell in love with some of them, and I thought, yeah, they, they, have, to come, they have to come to the United States and, and live with me. So anyway, I bought these, I found these three stitch markers that I thought were just the cutest darn things. This one is adorable, so pretty. This one says Merry Christmas in, um, in Norwegian. I think it's really, really cool because my ancestors almost all came from Iceland. And Merry Christmas in Iceland is spelled and looks very similar to that. Um, so I thought that was, that was really cool, so I wanted that one. And then this, this one was just, I can't see where I'm pointing. This one is just so adorable. Here's the sheep's butt and the front. And I just thought that was just the sweetest thing. It just, it just cracks me up that they've got the, the hind end of the sheep and the front end of the sheep on the same, the same stitch marker. It's just, it's too darn cute. So I got those three plus there's also a little packet of of four, let me get one of them out of here. They're four rings 
with a pretty little pearl type bead on it. And I thought those were really nice. I really like this style of, um, of stitch marker. Um, I guess these ones perhaps are more of the, the progress keepers where they have the removable, um, they have the, the little lobster claw or lobster clasp on the top of it so you can just move them around as, as you want. These are the ones that will slide onto the needle to mark the the spaces between repeats and, and things like that. So so I picked up those. So those are from Nordic Stitches and I, just, I love them. So thank you. Thank you Lily for for making those and for having them actually getting them sent out to me. They, they came really fast um, and I love them. I'm looking forward to getting them into my knitting and, and starting to use them. So that was one one acquisition that I had. The other acquisition were I made two two purchases. Let me get them separated here. The first was a lot on actually on eBay. I hadn't been on eBay in oh gosh, it have been a long time since I had done any any shopping on eBay. And so I just went on there, I was just looking around, and I guess I've just seen on a few podcasts people were talking about different um, knitting magazines, and I thought, oh, I wonder if there's anything available on, on eBay. So I started poking around and looking around, and sure enough, I, I found a lot of um, books, I guess books or magazines, publications, that I... Um, there was one that was a set of six six different books or magazines. So I thought, oh, I really like that. So I I bid on it and I was the lucky person that, that won on the auction. And so they, they just arrived to, earlier today when we came home this morning. Uh, later this morning we came home and these were sitting and waiting. So the first one is this one. And the first three of these books are ones that I'm not entirely sure I I will keep them they they look like they're really adorable books but they're not necessarily along the the lines of my style of of crafting um, they are the first three that I'm showing they are all crochet and I, I do enjoy crochet but it's not something I do as often now and particularly not the little I want to call them the little fiddly things, um, but they're not something that I tend to do a lot. So I might put them up, the first three up as a de-stash on, on Ravelry. Um, I'll mull that over, I still have to think about that. But I, I suspect that the, the first three I'm showing you are going to be ones that I, I probably will rehome someplace else. So this is the second one. So again, they're little crochet, and I just, I'm not into the little crocheted stuffed things. Um, it's an adorable book. The, the things in there are, they are really cute, but it's just not something I can, I don't see myself, I really don't see myself making them in any time in the near future. Another one, this is one that it's designed as all of the designs are making small squares that you then put together to create the different um, the different designs on there. And this one's also really cute. Um, it is something. This one I actually might keep because I do. I have in the past made several crochet blankets that have been using, they, they actually come out looking like quilt patterns where each of the squares are done. They're a small two round, um, a small two round gra granny square and then they're all stitched together to, to create a quilt pattern. And they're, they're quite nice. Um, so that book, I, I, might, I might keep that one for myself. I'm not 100% sure on that. The other one I bought this one I will definitely, I'm definitely keeping. It's Ami Risu. 
I, I'm hoping I'm not pronouncing that horribly wrong. But it's a, a Japanese knitting pattern book. And it, it has some really, really nice patterns in there. The patterns are in both, both English and, it's, no, the patterns are all in, no, they're English and Japanese. So I think that's really, really interesting. It's a, a bilingual magazine. So they have some really interesting articles in here. And there's some, some pretty patterns. I'm trying to see if there's... No, I can't really find... Um... No. I was trying to see if there was... Um... If there was just a, a picture that showed all of the different um, all the different patterns that are included in here, this is the spring summer 2015 issue. So issue number seven from spring and summer 2015. So thinking I might I wouldn't mind collecting the rest of these. I was looking on Ravelry at some of the others, and they've got some really pretty patterns in here. I think this one has six six patterns. But this was a nice little surprise that came in here and I was I was really happy to really happy to get this one. Also also in the this lot of books that I found on on eBay were these two. So these are two older issues of Pom Pom magazine. And they are from summer 2014, so it's issue number nine, and winter 2015, which is issue number 15. So these two were included in that lot, and that is that was why I was so excited about bidding on that lot, and I was so so excited when I discovered that I won this lot. There was also, I was looking around for other back issues of Pom Pom, and what I found was that uh, Knit Picks had a couple issues that were hard copy, uh, hard copy issues that they had available on their website. So I went and looked at those. One of them was on sale was on clearance and one of them was the regular price so I was able to get these two issues of Pom Pom Quarterly from the Knit Picks web, uh, website and these ones are the spring and autumn 2017 issues so issues 20 and yeah 20 and 22 so my collection of Pom Pom magazines has gone from zero to four in no time at all. I also have another, I have a bid in on, an, on another, um, another lot with some Pom Pom Quarterly magazines on eBay. It, the auction closes in a little over an hour from now when I'm taping this, so I'm just Crossing my fingers that I win that auction as well, um, and if I don't, it's it's not the end of the world. I'm I'm fine with that, uh, but I I am crossing my fingers that I I do win that auction. So, what else did I want to to talk to you about? Um, I finished Vlogtober. I posted um, a short. No, not always short, but I posted a video each and every day throughout the month of October. And what surprised me with it is that I had such a fun time doing that. And I'm also having such a fun time filming these, these podcasts. I'm finding it is something that I, I very much enjoy doing. So I think that's about all I have to, to talk to you about today. I hope you've had a nice time sitting here sipping your beverage and crafting and watching me listening to me rattle on about some of the things I'm working on um, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day fantastic rest of the week I look forward to seeing you guys all next week if you have not yet I ask that you please like and subscribe 
my channel. It really helps to bring a little bit more attention to my my tiny little my tiny little YouTube channel. So please hit the hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Um, also down in down below, I will have links to the different projects I talked about today, uh, the different podcasters I mentioned where I talked about um, some some cows that I'm taking part in. Um, I'll talk about some, or I'll talk about and list some of the things I purchased down there. And also in my show notes, you'll have information on where you can find me on other social media. So on Facebook, on Instagram, on Ravelry, these different things. So all of that information will be down below. So take care everyone. Hope you have a fantastic, you're having a fantastic time. Happy crafting and I'll, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!